It's a McCormick Deering made by International Harvester Company up there in Chicago. This particular one right here is a one and a half horsepower, but you can check the books. This these parts right here fits the bigger horsepower size. And this part right here is uh, this this little this this part right here. That 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 part is that that's a subject of some controversy. That's a rear breather right there on a very early model. It 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 it, it did not have this on there. This is factory original, and I do I do have this engine. I, I own this. It's a um, it's a three eighths pipe thread in the rear of the engine, and this come on the engine from the factory. This one is half inch pipe thread in the engine, and this is what the, the 99% of them will be this type right here. And I think probably from the factory that once they started to using this, I think every engine that came from the factory probably had one of these on it. I think it would just just uh, it was a it was regular equipment, and this is this is the way you'll find them. That's a original one. There. It's never been taken apart. Good example. Now this this is a three eighths pipe thread on this side, and half inch pipe thread on on the engine side. It does go in this position, but this is a part of some controversy. And this is to verify that it does exist, and I do I do own the engine. Uh, I can verify that. Also, I do have I do I, I don't have it in my possession, but I do I, I do know of a of another breather that has the four holes in it, and it is on a Type M, an early model. It seems to be it's maybe just a little smaller round this way, but it has four 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 bolts that are holding the top on. I do know about that one too. So there there is there is three examples that I have seen on an M model. Uh, to get on with this, to get on with the project at hand is I was assembling these breathers. Uh, I needed one for the bailing war engine, and we're putting that engine together in the raw, so I did save enough parts out here in the raw to assemble that that one there, and the rest of them uh, will be painted. The gaskets. If I, if I may just throw in a little something real quick about gaskets, is these housings... On these, on these, if you just, if you only have one of these, then you know this, this is, this don't matter to you. But if you have a choice, these tops right here, uh, even if you only have one, it's just good, good uh, workmanship. This top here, I guess the casting was made sideways because over here it's really, this is a lot of gasket area, and over there, oh, that's down to about a sixteenth, and this is a little more than an eighth. And the same way here, that's about a sixteenth, and that's about, that's more than an eighth down there. So, it's a skew, the casting was. The dimensions are all the same. Uh, let's see, here's an example of, of pretty much the same size all the way around, real large gasket area. The, and another one, uh, oh, that's fairly uniform. So you would have success with a gasket here, not too much here. And another thing that I bring to your attention is that opening down in there where your outlet is, is uh in this one it, it's completely open there uh well it's a big hole hole almost 100 percent and this one actually this this is a worser one it only has two small holes in that casting and the way it's made there you can't it looks like flashing but you can't break it away because that's what holding the seat in there very bad casting uh and uh Gasket material, gasket, and this did mic out about. Uh, I think that's uh, fifteen thousandths on the thickness on that, and and the way I cut these, I just put put this over there in the 
vise with a cloth on it there, lightly tighten it up, put the piece of gasket material on here, cut the two holes out here with a ball peen hammer, just just tap on there, that'll come out. Okay, if I was only going to make one of these, which I did make the first one that way, when when I had it in the in the vise over there, it had this on there, then I took the hammer and I went all the way around there, the the, the, the peen side, and knocked the inside out. And then I used that one as an example, and then you just lay it on here, pencil that in, and then cut them out. Do not cut the outside. Just cut your, ever how many you need, you cut the inside, and, and also cut it a little bit proud. Leave a little bit extra in there to make up for the part that you don't have here. Because these, these don't match up. When, when they there was not a match set and when you put these on there and line them up if you can see that when when that gets lined up there with a with a couple of bolts you see how much miss mismatch that is oh that's a lot there all the way around if you if you was using a factory cut gasket on here it would just only add to the to the bad fitting of it so if you make your own gasket, when you put all of this together, when you assemble all of this and tighten it up, then you can take a blade and go around there and trim that away, and you've got a professional looking job. Also, the gasket sealer, uh, always use a gasket sealer on a gasket. Just do not get in the habit of putting, putting gaskets on anything without some kind of gasket sealer. And I use Gasola, as you probably know, 99% of the time. But in this instance here where you've got these little little gaskets and, and you know, just irregular, then I do use the Permatex, that old brown, oh, it's been around for years. I mean, this is some good stuff right here. They have a number one and a number two. One of it gets hard and one don't. Just do the homework. Uh, you can get this stuff most anywhere. You know, Walmart, you, you, your parts store up there at the corner probably got it. A uh, gasket, protection, lay you in one of each, do your homework, use it, and that way you'll know where to use the soft or the hard kind. But it's a good, it's a good gasket material. I don't own any stock in the company. I'm just throwing that out there as it's pretty good. Another thing, the the most important part of this whole whole check valve, that's what it is, a check valve, but it's actually a PVC valve and it does need to be on the engine because it does work in conjunction with the oiler. When the, when the, when the piston comes back, it puts a pressure on the crankcase. And then when it when it goes the piston goes forward and it displaces that air volume, it puts a suction on the crankcase. And that suction is what aids in drawing that little drop of oil down and it also aids in not having any oil leaks at the bearings because of the vacuum. The, the spring right there, this is the most important part of this whole thing right here is the tension on this spring, the size, the whole thing. Do not use a cadmium plated spring in this engine. If you have to use a cadmium plated spring, just leave this thing off. You know, do not put, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be harping on them cadmium plated stuff and zinc plated. There is a reason not to use plated parts on these engines. The, the, the spring, it's quite important. And this, this thing right here, this little flapper is, uh, it's a three piece deal. You've got the bottom part right there, a little cast iron. It's got a part number and everything on it. You've got the piece of leather, which makes the seat part. And this year, uh, I've checked several of old ones, and it seemed like about 80,000 thick on the leather. Put your hole in your inner, Put the rivet in there like that. Put that thing up there like that right there. And, and brad that down there. And then take your scissors and trim it off. And you'll end up with something like... That one ain't been bratted over. You'll end up with something like that right there, ready to use. The uh, 
This will go in here. The way this works is got them four little shoes there so that it don't vacuum when it goes on that way. It, it's have an air passage down through there. That's the way that works. And this has to be proud right here of that housing so that so that it will seat. If you use too strong a spring, then there, it's hardly nothing. All oh, these springs are really, really weak. Really weak. Uh, it, it'll be worth your time and effort to seek out the correct spring. The uh, uh, you want it, and it with the correct length will be the where that will be proud of that housing. And you, and if you have if you have another one in there that has a short spring where it just comes level with that, you have to take into consideration that you're going to have a gasket between the two, so that will make the distance to be further apart there when you're when you're just putting them together. It's 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 such a simple the way the thing works is so simple but it's such an important part of the way this engine works the the the, the closed crank case and everything it's just a it's a, it's a, just a it's a it's a good functioning apparatus I would definitely be a miss if I did not show you something this was the this was the last one of these that I have not taken apart and up to this point I've done already and I've done already assembled all of all of this group here is assembled uh, complete in operating condition and I was going to break down some more there just kind of to get a cleanup on them and just to show you what uh, it's I guess it was quality control whatever it was the way these breathers works is is the, the this is the uh, this is the discharge end of it here and uh, the, the, the movement of the piston the volume of the piston displacement in the cylinder is how much negative and positive pressure is, is uh, produced in the crankcase. And, and to expel that positive pressure, it has to, it has to go out this out through this check, this check valve, PVC valve, and and in in the ones of these right here this casting is supposed to be open all the way around here and as you and 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 that's the way these are I just kept these aside for show and tell and the reason this add-on is uh, I found one that was just totally unacceptable this this right here part is that's flashing around through there Okay, with that one and the one that we looked at earlier, you can see it only has two openings, and I thought that was extremely restricted. Well, the last, the last one of these that I disassembled is this one, and it's the most restriction that I have encountered. And if you can look right in there, the opening. If I can describe it to you, is about it, it's not it's not an eighth. It's less than one eighth of an inch wide, and it's about one half inch long. Right in here, that's what we're looking at. Right in right in there, that from here to here, it's about an eighth inch. Well, it's not an eighth inch. It's less, and it's it's about a half inch long. That's supposed to be open all the way around. Uh, quite open quite a lot so this engine right here and this was completely full of grease this whole housing was was filled with some really really old grease this this engine this was not working on this engine yeah, I just wanted to add that on here that you will find parts that and what I'm going to do to fix this, I'm, I'm going to take the rotary rotary grinder in there, and, and I, I'll done already have it put back together. There won't be no show and tell. I'm just going to tell you, but I will put the rotary grinder in there and remove 
like half of it here and then go over here and remove half over there I will set that right also these other two here will be opened up to an acceptable amount and, and if I can reinforce the uh, if I can reinforce what what the difference in these is this this is the one that has the half inch thread in the block the later models that's that part okay this this actually was on an engine that I have here and and the hole in the back of the block is 3 8 it did not have a breather on it this was the way it came from the factory let's get on with the show 